Especially your mum. Oh, thanks. Presumably because she was part of choosing it and that. She, she was, yeah. I think. So, yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to Waffle TV, sponsored by West Beer. I'm Ross Jennings, and today I'm with Danny Braverman, who is the writer and performer of What No Fish. Now, Danny, this is quite a personal, historical, and family-oriented story, but how did you come about, and why did you turn it, turn it into a play? Well, you know, at first, um, I didn't know I was going to turn it into a play. What I discovered was this box full of cartoons that my great-uncle had done that had been hidden under a bed for decades, <laughs> and drawn on the back of wage packets. So I'm a writer, a theatre maker, but I didn't know what I was going to do with them. So I had a look through them and discovered some amazing stuff I'm not going to tell you about because it will ruin the show. Yep. And, um, and then I decided I'd try it out as a bit of storytelling. So I did it secretly to some of my friends in an art centre in London. And uh, they said, no, this is worth doing. So I kind of refound myself as a performer because I haven't performed for years. Yeah and decided I would develop it. Got myself an Arts Council grant and went off and, and tried it out in all kinds of sort of secret nooks and crannies as a piece of storytelling. So I did it in classrooms with kids. Yeah. I did it as part of an East End walking tour in London, yeah. um, in community centres and in theatres and then gradually the show got polished and developed till we're kind of premiering it here. And all linked to this, this sort of illustrated history and these pictures that your, was your uncle had drawn. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I didn't realise until I looked in them quite how powerful they were. I mean the first thing is he was an amazing artist. These weren't just doodles. Yeah. You see in the show that his art develops over time. Um, like any artist, you know, like Picasso, who yeah. had his blue period, a pink period, and Cubist thing. You know, my great uncle Ab changed his art over time. Also, they're kind of a social history because they're between 1926 and 1982. So you. Oh, okay. so and cover some of the greatest history, basically. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, this is an East End Jewish family during the war in the 30s you know, in that migration that happened, the people that know London. In fact, it was true of cities all over the world, including other British cities like Glasgow and Manchester and Leeds, that the Jewish community might have started off in the working class areas, made a bit of money and migrated. So that whole story is kind of in there. And a lot of personal stuff as well. Um, I discovered a whole story about a cousin of mine who uh, was disabled and ended up institutionalized. And I had no through, idea. Through these illustrations through and through these, wow, okay. And in fact, because he was institutionalized, I don't want to give too much away, but yeah. because he was institutionalized, of course, he was hidden away from society. So there's quite a lot about, um, about the times, but it's also universal. So it's not, you know, it's a, it's a very Jewish story, but I've had people come out and say, no, this is This is, this is what happened to us probably. So it's probably relevant to many, many of your viewers as well in some sort of way. Everyone. Yeah. And what, what I'm, I'm really interested in is what it triggers in other people. You know, we talk about um, audiences a lot, don't we, as performers and writers, and why they're important. And, and it's great that they like it, but I don't think that's kind of enough. Yeah. I mean, you know, audiences like all kinds of stuff that I don't like, you know, I don't think is a massive value. In fact, some stuff, you know, Roy Chubby Brown, bless his heart, you know, I'm not a massive fan of, um, but people love him. So I, I'm kind of more interested in not just kind of laughs yeah. and applause, but what does that journey that someone's made in a theatre do for them? How have they changed at that time? And what has it stirred in what's them? It stirred, what's yeah. it triggered in you? And if, I mean, we've got a few videos on our website, which are actually not just people saying this is the best show in the world, which some of them do, but also they're saying, you know, this is what it triggered in me. This is a memory at Trigger. This is why it's kind of important for me, because it's helped me think about my story and where I come from. And because it's a story of ordinary people doing extraordinary things, because everybody's life is extraordinary, actually. But somehow or other in the media, we think if you're a member of the royal family and you've had a baby, that's more extraordinary than anybody else's life, but it's not. So you'll probably find a wave of people going into the attics now, trying to look Absolutely. for their own stories, which is nice. Yeah, I had a lovely guy who was a London tour guide who did an interview that's on the website, and he was saying it, it make, he wants to look at the photographs now of his mum and dad because they weren't, didn't necessarily have a happy life, but the photographs show them happy. Yeah. And he kind of goes through that as a process for himself so that he crystallises their memory in a way that works for him. Way. Yeah, so 
So it is a kind of a roller coaster. It's very funny. Uncle Ab's art was very funny. Um, it was kind of a bit like, they're a bit like the cartoons that you get in newspapers. You know, okay. they synthesize things in one go yep. with a strap line. But they're also, there's a lot of subtext and sometimes they're suddenly very moving. And they're suddenly about, he drew about painful things very honestly. And I'm not going to tell you what they are because those are the surprises in the show when you suddenly see, so bloody hell, this, yeah. guy, this guy drew about this on that week. Yeah. <laughs> that must have been really painful and yeah. difficult. And then he gave it to his wife as a way of communicating. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's very different, I think. From other it sounds people. incredibly original and um, a fantastic idea. And I hope everything's been going well so far. Audiences. Our audiences love it. We've been, we have not dropped below a four-star review Brilliant. yet, <laughs> um, and so reviewers like it. Audiences love it. Audiences are building. Um, so hopefully, you know, the more the merrier. We'd love to obviously to sell out like everybody else would. Um, yeah. And Get after the fringe this year, any you're going on back to London to continue shows? We are. We've got bookings in October there's a new Jewish community centre in Finchley Road okay. which is in sort of Hampstead in in London and we're part of the launch season there um, we're sharing it with Ruby Wax and all kinds of other luminaries um, and Rachel Mars who is a brilliant performer who people should see at Summer Hall as well and um, yeah so we're, we're, we're doing that in October and looking for bookings and we you know I mean for example it's it's been interesting how many Americans have come and said this is our story you know, there's a guy from Minneapolis who came, who grew up with the Cohen brothers and, uh, you know, the filmmakers. And he, uh, he said, this is, you know, this is a very, in some ways, very American story as well. So we're hoping we'll get, we'll get bookings to go all over the world. It will be lovely to tell the story wherever anybody wants to hear it, really. Well, best of luck to you. And thank you very much for speaking to us today. And don't forget, you can catch Danny Braverman with What No Fish at 3 p.m. every day at Summer Hall. This is Ross Jennings from Waffle TV. Sounds okay. so lovely. Man. What a great, what a lovely idea. <laughs>